Um, it's for We Are Change. It's a basically, they're from America and they're just yeah. doing a European, uh, uh, they're just documenting like the G8 and the uh, and different things that were happening in Europe at the moment and they're just talking to travel around. Right, well yeah, go ahead, if you want to do a quick... Go ahead, I mean, I, I know. Hey, okay, just a quick one. Okay. Yeah. What? So what do you think of the G8 summit? Um, well, I think obviously there's been a lot of um, focus on the personalities involved rather than the actual social and economic issues that are there and um, I think there should be far more focus on global development on eliminating the arms trade and on tax justice on a global basis rather than on the personalities the American president, the Russian president it should be focused on jobs and economics And how do you think that should be done? Well I think it's really up to them, those leaders to um, you know, to set the agenda and also I think, you know, the, the major political leaders in the world have a lot of questions to answer on their human rights record, particularly Russia, the United States, those larger countries um, have very serious questions to answer and uh, I think it needs an international response with more input from developing countries like India, Brazil, countries like that, rather than having um, large, large military powers dictating policy. Uh, what, what, oh, sorry. what do you think of um, Michael Noonan going to the Bilderberg Group in 2012? I actually submitted a parliamentary question on that and uh, yeah, well I think, you know, any organisation that has meetings in secret, I think it's a major problem and all of these discussions should be made in public. Okay. Awesome. Thank, right, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's a nice guy actually. I went drinking with him. So he's an MP or MEP? <laughs> He's no, he's no, I think he's on. He's a member of the Irish Parliament. Is he? I oh. think he's a TD at this stage. I think he could be. Well, he said he was. I remember he got elected into Europe, into the, or sorry, into the local uh, government. But then I think there was a by-election or something, and he got elected Florida, into the Parliament. You might want to just double check and yeah. Google Park uh, Nulty. Uh, I can actually ring someone up. No, if, if just Google Power Nulty Labour Party, you'll find out all these details. Yeah, our finance minister was at the Bilderberg Group in 2012, so that's why I was asking. Yeah, that that's a, really a good, good question. That was an excellent question. Yeah. Yep. All right, so. Yeah. Do not curse, we're live. Fuck, you fuck, kiss shit, fuck. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Hilarious. So, so what, do you, what do you feel about the G8 summit? Um, I noticed that the uh, roads leading to Dol Éireann were all... Um, cordoned off. That's really the only thing I noticed about it. And you know, these big guys, uh, you know, the leaders of uh, big major countries all meeting up and uh, they're going to, uh, I don't know what they're going to talk about. Vladimir Putin, you know, I mean, he's a very cagey looking individual. You know, like he's a very bad poker player. He wouldn't be any good at poker. I don't trust him. But I don't trust politicians in general. What, what, was, what was the question? <laughs> what did you get? Uh, do you know about the Bilderberg Group meeting that happened in Watford, England? <laughs> the what? The Bilderberg Group meeting. Michael Noonan went there in 2012, yeah. and it's just basically all the central bankers and politicians and elite getting together. They don't really, don't really disclose any minutes of the meeting. Something like a G8, but yeah. that's more kind of like presidents. I, I, I have no uh, faith in any of these guys, bankers and so on. Um, uh, they, they have no sort of moral backbone I don't trust them and I think those kind of people you know they're good sort of mathematically or in business but they don't have uh, ethics and um, uh, yeah so I, I don't trust I don't trust politicians in general because I, I never know what they're saying they, 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 they need to talk in a way where they don't lose votes yeah so yeah. they need to sound passionate yeah and, and, and at the same time also say nothing yeah, yeah. So I, I don't look to them for any kind of leadership, and uh, with bankers and so on, they're just clinging to power, and th those kind of people are corrupted by power. And you know, it just it constantly gets revealed to us the scale of uh, the sort of corruption. Uh, so I, I don't know the thing you were referring to, though. Yeah, but do you think like as things are getting worse and worse economically, people start to lose more of their civil liberties and rights and so on? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I've, I've, I feel very detached from it all, so I, I, I don't know. But I'm sure under the right circumstances, I would feel that my civil liberties have, are in some way violated. But I sort of don't engage in it, so I don't notice. Yeah. 
I don't want freedom, man. I just want someone to love. <laughs> I mean, you know all this scandal now with the NSA monitoring our emails and mm. Facebook, all this. Well, that's the thing. I mean, that, 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 that's the thing now. I mean, uh, you know, who is the enemy? The enemy is everyone now. See, so that's great for the NSA. It's great for the uh, the, the war uh, machine machine over the United States. I mean, you know, in conventional war, your enemy was there. You knew who it was, and it was sort of fairly black and white. But now, anybody, everybody's the enemy. So that they justify their existence by saying, well, you know, these covert, uh, you know, uh, cells. They can disguise themselves. They can look like us. They walk among us. The enemy could be you, you know. So, so, th so therefore, th so it, you know, they can monitor. They justify it by uh, you know the protect protection of the United States. But of course, a lot of the American foreign policy uh, has created uh, a lot of uh, the uh, the problems that they're now trying to fight. And they're still creating them in Syria and in Libya, supporting Al Qaeda rebels. Well, you know, and, but also, you know, you, you have to, you can't blame the United States for everything. I mean, you know, I don't know what's going on in Syria, uh, but like, um, yeah, a war. I mean, as we know, like uh, war, you know, you vanquish your enemy, but uh, the the only way forward is peace, because that's the only within peace. It, it things can can happen. Things. I mean, that's what happened in north north of Ireland. You know, after 30 years of conflict, finally they just said, "Listen, we're never going to solve this problem, but we want to have a peaceful uh, environment in which our children can grow in, grow up in. So let's sort of agree to disagree and uh, you know just sort of uh, try and peacefully coexist. Because that's ultimately what what will have to happen anyway. So you just hope that um, you know. Wise voices will prevail, and uh, yeah. Are you optimistic about that, or? Well, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it will. I mean, I mean, eventually peace will have to break out, you know, and and people will see, you know, they will learn that uh, war, conflict, you know, it might solve things in the short term in, in terms of you know killing your enemy. Yeah. I don't know. Well, that's wise words. I don't know. Wise I, words. I, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I'd need to think more about it. But anyway, I'm sure you can just take a 20 seconds of it. <laughs> no well, worries. What about Obama? What's your opinion of Obama? Uh, well, I, I liked, uh, I, I think when he said, I, I think uh, Bush uh, created an awful lot of tension when he you know, talked about the axis of evil. And I think. Uh, when Obama was asked, you know, how he would deal with the Iranians, he said, well, we, we need to sit down and talk to these folks. And that sort of approach, I think it, it really, that those words sort of rang around the world. And, and, and I think, uh, although, you know, he said those things, but he, he seems to be very much in pay to the, uh, to the military machine in the United States. So, so I don't know. I, I think uh, w with the President of the United States, it's like, um, does he really have power, or is he just uh, a spokesperson for, for uh, you know, these other, the other, the real forces of power? Maybe it's just like a face that people think that they have choice. Yeah. 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 Very, very well said. Thank you for okay, those. Guys. Okay, so who was that? That's Dave McSavage. He's a famous Irish comedian. Awesome. He has a TV show, a TV show called The Savage Eye. Awesome, so we got a comedian and a politician today yeah. on our random tour of Dublin. Thank you so much for setting that up and recognizing the faces. I feel like every, a lot of people that we talk to like that though, they'll say really good things like that. And they'll get to Bush and they understand that Bush had some part in all these things. And then you get to Obama and they go, maybe presidents don't really have power. <laughs> <laughs> but you just said Bush was created all this tension, but then when it comes to Obama, yeah, maybe it's not his fault. I though. think people bought into the Obama machine people that they don't want to be calm. They don't want to feel, people yeah. don't want to feel like they've been made for a fool. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what a lot of it is, no matter who they're supporting, Republicans, Democrats, they bought into the system. Obviously, it's not Republican or Democrat, but you know what I mean? Like mm. in America, they bought into the system, and when you try to tell them actually it's all bullshit, yeah, they yeah. feel stupid, and they don't want to feel stupid. People don't want to feel like someone pulled the wool over their eyes. He's right about the American war machine. I don't even call it American war machine. I'd call it like the war machine that uses America yeah, yeah. to kind of do whatever it does and conquer countries and fire missiles or... Who knows what else is going to happen. So what happened here at Occupy? They all camped out here for... They actually all camped out here in a very serious winter that we had. It was ice everywhere and stuff. But uh, they were here for several months, I think maybe four or three months maybe, and uh, they were all tossed out very violently one well, morning. Guys with black ski masks came on. On... Uh, no uh, ID on the shoulders of who they were. Usually you have an ID of where they just come up, they block down the streets, they come in, they tossed everybody out, confiscated all kind of electronic stuff, cameras and whatever. Then uh, they continually went down to the police, I guess you'd call it, uh, district or precinct or whatever you call it, which is just down here on the left. And uh, they, uh, I guess they were protesting that police station for a a few weeks, I think, at the time, and then they were being. Uh, yeah. Then it turned into a bit of a violent issue. There's, there's video of this online, and people were being arrested and stuff. So, yeah. But this, they picked this location to occupy first because this is the yeah. the central bank here. Yeah, this is the central bank. Yeah. Rothschild um, Bank. Sorry. Is it a Rothschild Bank? This is actually um, a central bank. I've read um, the the, um, the the debate which established this bank back in the was in the midst of World War Two back in 1942. And um, there was one, we called them TD, you would call them congressmen, that was pushing to find out who exactly would own the credit that they could use, you know, the, the, the factional uh, reserve banking system. And uh, it was revealed that it would have been in private hands. And he was very worried about this and he pushed for the fact that he thinks that the people should have the ability to own this. And as we can see, yeah. the people don't own anything. But one thing I just really wanted to know is, you know, just, I, I know you, you were a part of We Are Change. Um, Ireland, and uh, I, I like talking to different members because I barely get to communicate with any of the guys. Yep. Uh, we really don't have a central command or communication systems like we should. But but when you were doing it, I, I like to talk to people and ask them like, what was their favorite part or favorite moment or the best moment uh, or accomplishment that happened when, when you guys were okay, doing that. Sam. You know what, the Lisbon Treaty stuff was really interesting and the first time around was great because we had the victory but the people voted against it the first time around so that gave people a bit of self-belief and a bit of power but in the end, um, the second time around people were a bit disheartened by it because like also in Ireland like, it's not very hard to kind of not come across people that are accountable for stuff like politicians and stuff like that but uh, after a while um, <clears throat> things can get be a bit tedious, and yeah. you know, but I just think like if you have one goal or a couple of goals, you can always accomplish things a lot better than you know trying to solve a hundred different problems at once. But uh, definitely, like the theme, the, the or having a part in the Lisbon campaign for some round was definitely a big achievement. I remember hearing about that and hearing how uh, you guys were a big part of of uh, shutting it down the first time. Well, we kind of, well, there was a lot of people that were kind of really motivated and had different skills and you can pull people together, you get really positive things and plus you get negative things happening as well, but uh, overall, yeah, it was, it was a good achievement, but it also kind of highlights that, you know, democratic decisions by, especially when the people vote for them are not really respected here in Ireland yeah. because that's the second time in recent years where, especially on the EU vote, people didn't really have uh, uh, their, their, their actual uh, democratic right the first time around wasn't really respected. So it just shows you that uh, there's only one way and it's like it's a yes way for the people that want you to do whatever yeah. they want to do. Wasn't there a politician that tripped and fell and tried to charge you guys with assault? He actually didn't. He actually charged the guy down and he fell over a path and he grabbed onto the guy. And then when the police came, uh, we reported it first. And then we uh, said, oh, you can check the CCTV cameras. Then they claimed that they didn't work and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, he went on the news and different radio stations saying that like, he was uh, a 
attacked, or he kind of played up to that line, and he never was. But what really happened? He was just kind of like, what happened was like he went to Brussels and um, he basically voted saying that he wouldn't respect the Irish democratic vote if it came out as a no to the Lisbon Treaty. So then in, what happened in Maturum was a lot of angry people turned up to his pro-EU uh, um, uh, Lisbon Treaty uh, event. And uh, when, I, when he was asked, he was very much angered by people when they were saying that, uh, why did he vote against the people that he represents <laughs> about their wishes? And uh, it kind of turned nasty and he got really angry straight away. He, the guys, you know, he, he comes from, um, he, he was actually arrested for being in the IRA before and now he's like a Euro fanatic, which is kind of like, and he fell and tripped over himself. Well, he kind of the video clearly saw. No, no, he, he went to grab at somebody, and he kind of like fell over like a curb or, or, or step or something. I forget what it was, but it was uh, it was no way he was attacked. Come on, I mean, yeah, like if he was attacked, there would be like somebody. There would be huge talking. repercussions. I remember seeing the video of that. I'd be like, what the hell is going on? Because it was a few years ago that you guys were really active. What inspired you guys or what made you guys want to do what you guys were doing? I guess when I, guess when, uh, when I was in America, I was just kind of came across your stuff by accident. And uh, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool that people are doing that because you get the same old kind of people and politicians that go up and or journalists go to politicians and they ask kind of like questions that aren't difficult at all. For example, when you asked, I remember watching one of your videos and you were asking one of uh, Obama's kind of like, I don't know if she was like a campaign director or some sort of person like that, but you said like, what about the NDAA? And she didn't know what the hell you were <laughs> asking her about because she's never asked these different questions. Yeah. She actually probably didn't, I wouldn't be surprised she didn't know what that is. Debbie Washerman Schultz, who denied the kill list even existed, which is pretty crazy. But now you're doing music and where can people find out more about your music? Yeah, you can go to uh, ghoststatesmusic.com or else you can go to Facebook and find us there. We have lots of European gigs coming up this year and doing our second album. And that's it for now. Awesome. I'm actually playing um, a few festivals this year too, during the summer. And I'm playing our last art show for the foreseeable future this Sunday. What's the website again? This Sunday, I yeah. think it's. What date is this? I don't know, but it's this Sunday night already. Alright, what, what's <laughs> the website again? Ghoststatesmusic.com Awesome. Well, thank you Keith and Dylan as well for showing us around. We got a politician and a comedian today. Good day for our short little layover over here in Dublin. Yes. So every July 11th, the Protestants get together in their communities and have a huge bonfire with uh, effigies of Catholics and the Pope. So you're a, you're a great you're a definitely a great sport. Um, and there's a large number of studies that show that fluoride causes cancer. <laughs> I just used as rat poison.